In this knife talk video, we're going to be looking at the Great Eastern Cutlery Farm and Field number 71 Bullnose in OD Green Linen Micarta. And uh, this is again from the Farm and Field line, which is kind of like Great Eastern Cutlery's work knife line or almost value knife line, but um, they've had some cool things in the, the Farm and Field line. So uh, you can see the tube here. It's kind of a farm field as in hunting. And then they've had a few different patterns on this. They did, um, they've done a lot of these, the 71s. Uh, I had a 65 fish knife, um, really cool knife. It's in stain, it was in stainless steel and had a clip point and then a bottle opener slash fish scaler slash hook disgorger. They did the number 35 calf pen recently with um, a one arm or uh, one hand opening razor style blade and a Warncliffe with a liner lock. So some kind of different patterns that are made uh, at a high value price point, uh, as in, you know, they're, they're cheaper than most other Great Eastern Cutlery knives and made to be, you know, using knives, right? I'm sure a lot of people collect them also, uh, but they're definitely made to be able to be, you know, bought and used. Um, these, uh, come at definitely a lower price point uh, than most other gradation cutlery knives. Um, this was about $57, I think. Uh, some of the other dealers, some of the other versions of this knife are a little more, a little less, a couple, couple dollars more, a couple dollars less. The fish knife I had was, I think, uh, $60. Um, and, uh, you know, like the two blade knives, like the Hay and Helper, um, they can be up towards 70, but they also sometimes are a little lower. So definitely less expensive than a lot of other Great Eastern Cutlery knives like the Northfield, which, you know, get up into the 120 plus dollar range and stuff. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're not well made. So um, kind of looking real closely here, there's no gaps, which is something that you don't see all that often on other knives in this price range, like case knives at this price range and things like that. Um, definitely the queen knives that I've had have lots of gaps. Uh, still has a you know perfectly even spring. There's you know no it's not sunken or anything like that. That's not something I you know worry about a whole lot. Neither is the the blade gaps or the spring gaps, but um, you know it's something that shows that it's still a really well made knife. Uh, no like you know, chips or anything like that, no cracks in the handle, it's micarta, so it doesn't really crack very much, but uh, also well centered. So definitely a nicely made knife. Um, and uh, the first thing, you know, kind of to talk about this knife is that it's Great Eastern Cutlery's rendition of a sod buster. And um, a sod buster is named for like this, it's like a nickname for uh working people, uh, farmers who bust the sod or the, the soil. Um, and it's it's definitely very similar to the case sod buster. So I guess I'll open it here. Um, I believe that it's a, a little bit bigger than the case sod buster junior, but it's definitely smaller than the K, case sod buster large size. Um, but what's a sod buster, you know, as the pattern? Well, it's normally a shadow pattern, which it means that it doesn't have a bolster, so there's no end cap or bolster. Um, they often have what's called a, a bird's eye pivot, which is where the pivot pin is uh, peened into washers. So this circle around the smaller circle is a washer that the, the pivot pin there, which is definitely a big pivot pin, that's another thing, um, it's you know a larger pivot pin, is peened into, and that means it's pa uh, hammered so that uh, it kind of expands, and it's, it's not going to you know pull out of, of there. It, it's going to stay really sturdy, and those bird's eye pivots make them, you know, it's one of the things that helps to make it a working knife. It's going to stay really sturdy, um, and I actually like the, the bird's eye pivot that they do on these farm and field bull noses with the uh, F and F, USA, and then the two stars. Kind of cool looking. Um, some bird's eye pivots on other side busters are polished, uh, but I like how this looks. Um, and then also side busters usually have this kind of upturn at the butt of the handle like this. 
Now, that's something that in other Knife Talk videos I've talked about, um, I, I often don't like the ergonomics of that, but I think that it works on these knives because there's no like guard up here. Um, but moving on to, to other aspects of the knife other than it's a sodbuster, and this is part of the sodbuster, but it has this really nice drop point blade style, um, you know, very classic for a sodbuster knife, but it, uh, the GC is a little bit less extreme of a belly than the case version, um, which I definitely like. Um, I think that this is a really well done um, drop point blade shape. It's gonna be really utilitarian. It's a nice size so that you can do things like, you know, you would when you're hunting or, or working and, um, you know, have pretty much enough blade and especially in a knife that's easy to carry like this is. Um, it's 1095 steel, like pretty much all Great Eastern Cutlery knives are. They haven't made any stainless knives, or they didn't make any stainless knives in 2017, and they haven't made any yet in 2018. Um, so, uh, you know, that's it's good steel, um, very, you know, classic traditional steel, and it's heat treated by Peter's Heat Treating in Meadville, which is one of the most well respected heat treating outfits. So, it's, it's going to hold an edge as well as 1095 should, really. Um, it, uh, and now one thing that, that some people had a problem with on this knife was they felt that the pull was too strong. So, you know, if you're not familiar with pull, that means how much it takes to open the knife up, right? Um, when I got this knife, I thought that it was around maybe an eight, probably seven and a half to eight on the pull scale, which is pretty strong. I mean, definitely stronger than most knives and, you know, going up to where if you're not used to opening knives that have a strong pull, it might be tough to open. Um, and people have said that it's it's too strong, they don't like it. Uh, and kind of that's something that I'll talk about a little later with, with I guess I'll talk about it now. Um, sometimes it, it can get a little bit wish-washy with what people want from Great Eastern Cutlery Knives. Um, kind of historically, Great Eastern Cutlery Knives have had really strong pulls. Um, some of the early ones that I've had, I had a, an early um, 23 pattern, which is like a, a hunter, uh, that was like a nine, like pretty much like close to impossible to open. Uh, I loosened it up and it got better, but um, the earlier knives were all pretty much like in general, overall, very strong pulls. And then people were asking like on forums and stuff for lighter pulls. And, uh, you know, GEC has been doing that recently. The um, 56s, the 43s, the Bull Moose, the 81. Um, they've all had lighter pulls in the, some down to like, some people have said three. Uh, I have never had a GEC that was close to three. But um, my Bull Moose, or I'm sorry, my uh, 43 Oregon Trapper is probably a four. Maybe, maybe a five, probably a four. Uh, so definitely lighter. They've been doing lighter pulls. Um, and people complained about that too. Uh, they were saying that they were too light and that they didn't like it. So, um, you know, maybe GEC heard that and decided, well, a work knife should have a harder pull so it doesn't close on you. So we'll make these ones hard again. And now people are complaining about that too. So I think that there's just, you know, everybody's not, you can't please everybody all the time, right? Uh, so as for this knife, um, I think that if any knife is going to have a stronger pull, I think that a, a work knife like this is more appropriate, right, for it to have a stronger pull. But with that said, after having this for, um, I guess, about a day now, um, opening it and closing it, I you know put some WD-40 in the pivot, which is what GEC recommends. Um, I've opened and closed a little bit, used it a little bit, um, you know, wiggled it around, and it's actually much more easy to open now. Um, I don't think, you know, it still has no blade play or anything like that, so it's not, it's not loosened up. It just, you know, has broken in really quickly and really well. Um, you can see no trouble for me to open it. I would say that it's at most a seven, and that is, I wouldn't call it a seven. I think. I can't imagine anyone calling it more than seven. I would actually call it a six at this point. So it's it's definitely stronger than, you know, like a uh, Swiss Army knife, an A-Lock Swiss Army knife, which is what I base my 
uh, center point, the five on. Um, it's definitely stronger than that, but it's not all that much stronger. It's, like I say, a six, maybe 6.5 at best for me. Um, and with that, it actually is more pinchable now than it was when I first got it because it's a, it's a little easier to open. Um, and along with the, the pull getting a little lighter, it's smoothed out. Uh, when I first got it, it was definitely, you know, not as smooth as the, you know, more the non farm and field knives, the Titty Ute and uh, especially Northfield knives. Um, it was a little rougher, but as I've opened and closed it a bunch, it is, uh, you know, a much smoother, opens and closes with really nice snap, easy to open and close. Again, you can pinch it. So I have n really no complaints on, on the strength of the pull or the snap. I think it has great action, um, uh, an appropriately strong pull. Um, and another thing that, that some people had was blade wrap. Now, when I first got this, I checked for blade wrap. I actually asked the dealer to, to um, pick one out that didn't have blade wrap. And you know he said he did, didn't have blade wrap or blade play. And uh, there was none when I when I first got it. I checked. I you know closed it. I put a piece of paper in and, and you know closed it to check if it cut the paper, which is a good way to check for blade wrap. Um, and there was none. Uh, now later on, after I used it some, there was a tiny, 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 tiny little spot that looked like it was hitting a little bit. Now I don't know if maybe while I was carrying it, it you know got depressed in the handle. Um, you know, push down like this, or if maybe I kind of gave it a little extra oomph closing it and like threw it down, um, gave it, you know, more, more force closing than the normal, but it did seem to get just a tiny bit right about here, uh, like the ever slightest bit. And I just, um, sharpened it a little bit, uh, with my, um, my, Spider code double stuff and the blade wrap came out and it hasn't come back. So I don't know if that was just a fluke where, like I say, I pushed it down too much or pushed it closed real hard, but it hasn't happened again. So I, I would say that this knife didn't come with blade wrap and you know still doesn't have it. So no complaints there. Uh, fluky, fluky things like that can happen if you push the knife down too hard or you know sit on it or something. Um, so, uh, you know, very happy with the action and the and all that. No blade wrap, which, again, people have complained about the uh, toughness of the pull and blade wrap. I have no complaints. One thing that I'm really happy with, and another thing that I think GEC has listened to, I mean, I might be kind of overestimating uh, how much they, they listen, but um, is the last few GEC knives I've gotten, the, the tips have been nowhere close to proud. Now... My uh, 43 Oregon Trapper, its tip came nowhere close to proud, but it also had blade wrap, and, and it had more, much more than this. Um, it took sharpening it with diamond stones like two or three times of putting a new bevel on to, to take out the blade wrap, and I did take it out. There's no blade wrap anymore in my 43, but I think that they, you know, it came with such a low tip that it had some blade wrap. But again, not the case for this one, and I appreciate that they're sending knives out without the proud tips. Um, I've had a good number of Great Eastern Cutlery knives that came from the factory or from the dealer with, uh, you know, the tip sitting kind of like that, right? So not necessarily proud, not sticking up like that, but enough that as you run your finger on it, you know, you can catch. And I, I really don't like that. It's one of those things, like if there's anything that I'm overly uh, sensitive about on a knife, it's that, it's, you know, blade tips being proud. So I'm happy that they're making their knives not have close to or proud blade tips. And there, ha I have had GC knives that were, you know, the tips were proud like that also. So I'm very happy that it seems like in general, overall, over the last few Great Eastern Cutlery knives I've gotten, they're, you know, keeping the tips from being proud. Really happy with that. Um, so just a really nicely made knife and, and you know keep in mind with all of this that it's 20 plus dollars more less expensive than pretty much any Great Eastern Cutlery knife in the um, Titty Ute or Northfield line, right? Uh, I think some single blade micarta 
56s uh, bird dogs were um, like $78. So other than that, I, you know, usually Great Eastern Cutlery, Titty Ute, or Northfield branded knives are 80 plus dollars. And again, this is 56. So it's, you know, 20, 20 plus dollars less than any of the other, you know, brands. And uh, still has that great construction. Really, you know, nicely sanded. There's some um, kind of, uh, you know, sanding to make this uh, not, not sharp in the hand. It's not very square. I mean, it's a thicker knife, but that's to give you more, um, you know, purchase in your hand. But it's nice and rounded. Uh, feels good in the hand. Um, speaking of which, I didn't say anything about the ergonomics of this knife. So uh, the the upturn at the butt here, I often think that that you know, kind of takes away from the usable space of, of a knife's handle, but it's less so on this because there's no guard. So a lot of modern knives that have this upturn at the butt have a guard also, and that kind of pinches your hand together. That's not the case on this one. So you can grip it here. There's actually a little bit of like a, a um, concave right here and I, th I think that that's for your finger um, I'm, I'm not sure I guess I could ask next time I'm at the Great Eastern Cutlery Factory but um, it kind of gives you a, a place to, to put this index finger and you can you know really get a good hold on the knife because of that so full four finger grip even with my big you know wide hands um, you can also grip it like this it's comfortable in this grip so you know cutting food and things like that um, so very ergonomic and with that said uh, easy to carry also not a huge knife um, they had uh, you know they had the bull buster which is a much bigger version and um, that one I actually I got rid of it because it was it was felt too big to carry at the time but I'll talk about that later also um, but overall just a really nice knife if you want to put a lanyard on it you could I one of the ones I had of this earlier I put a green um, paracord lanyard on but I think leather lanyards look nice on it um, so just a, a really well-made knife for a lower price than normal from Great Eastern Cutlery that you'll be able to you know carry use use it hard without worrying and you know really really good knife but I want to talk about why I decided to buy this knife a little bit in this video also um, and uh, kind of the first reason is that I think I've had three other green micarta uh, 71s. I recently, like about a month ago, traded into one. It had been used a lot and had a lot of patina and stuff, and it was a fine knife, but um, I decided to move it along. I had another linen micarta one, um, and uh, at the time I thought that it didn't feel good in my hand. I don't know if my hands are... I don't know, different now, uh, they might be, but it feels good in my hand now. So, um, you know, that, that reasoning doesn't apply anymore. And then I had one, uh, that I believe was actually canvas, OD green canvas micarta. Now, if I'm wrong about that, if they never made a canvas micarta OD green one, then, you know, feel free to let me know. Um, but I think that it was, and, uh, I sold it because I think I like did a sell off and, I often, you know, regret selling the knives that I do when I do, but sometimes, you know, you just have to get rid of some. But uh, one of the the person who I uh, sold it to um, on Blade Forms, I, I think his username's Flat Black Capo. Um, he still posts it sometimes and still uses it, and even still has the the paracord lanyard that I said that I put on it. So um, I'm glad that somebody's still using it and carrying it and everything. But like I say, I've had, I've had it three times before and have found reasons to not keep it. But at the same time, each time I, I felt like, oh man, it's a nice knife, especially for the price. I should get one again. There's a reason I've probably gotten it. There's probably a reason I've gotten it three times, you know. Uh, and then the other thing is that, like I said earlier, I had a bull, uh, bull buster, which is the number 21 pattern. Remember, this is the number 71 bull nose. They made a number 21 Bull Buster, which is the, the bigger version. So like I said, this is like a, a little bit bigger than the case um, Sod Buster Jr. They made the number 21 Bull Buster, which is like an even bigger version uh, than the, the case large Sod Buster. So pretty much exactly the same other than it was just bigger. Um, and that was a really nice knife. Uh, I decided to sell it, like I said, because 
I can't remember if I sold it or traded it, but I decided to get rid of it, like I said, because it just seemed a little bit too big to carry at the time. But now I carry, you know, my Great Eastern Cutlery number 45 Lumberjack. I carry the number 98 Texas Camp Knife. So I think that I would be comfortable carrying a, a number 21 Bull Buster now. Uh, so hopefully they do another run of those. I think that they should. I think that people would buy them. And I think that uh, it's just another good working pattern for if you want a bigger thing than this, bigger knife than this. Uh, but, you know, kind of that all together. Um, another reason was, again, because of the value, right? So, like, uh, this knife, again, $57 about. Uh, and compare that to the 43 Oregon Trapper that I just got was $137. So for almost, you, you can almost buy three of these. You can buy like two and a half of these uh, with the same money that you can buy one of the 43 uh, Oregon Trappers in Stag. Um, so, you know, definitely a high value. You're going to be able to use this just as well as you can use those. Um, and I'm, I, I'm always going to be a knife user. Uh, I have some knives that I have just as collector pieces, but I definitely feel somewhat ridiculous about having them and not using them. And I definitely enjoy knives more when I, you know, use them and don't just let them sit. Um, so I appreciate the fact that you don't have to worry about using this. Um, and kind of the next thing is that it's replaceable, right? Uh, the 43 Oregon Trapper and Stag, they sold out most of them before they even went on websites and uh you know you can't get them and if you want to get one in the secondary it's going to be a lot more than 137 dollars uh so that's not the case with these um these they've made they made them in 2017 they made them uh obviously this year uh they made them at least three other times maybe at least two other times uh and they seem to be kind of committed to making uh, runs of the number 71 bullnose and the 15. Those are kind of their main patterns, I think, at this point. Um, and so you don't have to worry that, you know, if you lose or kind of overuse this and, and want to get another one, you'll probably be able to. You might have to wait a year, but you'll probably be able to get another one. Um, so that's nice to know. Uh, I'm going on a trip uh, this weekend and I wanted to get something, you know, kind of like that, that I can take with me and if I lose it or, um, you know, have to leave it behind for some reason, uh, which obviously I wouldn't be happy about. I mean, I definitely, $57 is less expensive than other gradation color knives, but it's still a lot of money for a knife. I don't want to have to leave this knife behind at all. But, um, you know, it's definitely less of a big deal than say, you know, the 77 um, medium Barlow from Collector Knives that I just got. That, you know, probably couldn't get another one of those. This could get another one off. So that's another reason I got it. And then finally, um, I got it because uh, my, uh, my girlfriend is, she's really uh, cool about my interest in knives. She's very supportive. And, um, you know, she even did a video for the, the knife that we keep at, at our house here, um, a Mora companion. Uh, and she kind of comments on my knives sometimes. Like some she thinks are, are pretty, some she thinks are good looking, and some she thinks really aren't. Like she doesn't like Stag. Uh, she thinks the GC uh, banana knife, the 35 Churchill in um, green banana bone is good looking. And then she thinks the uh, cranberry saw cut number 15 sheep foot TC Barlow is good looking. Um, so she kind of comments on them sometimes and says, you know, uh, that they're good looking or not good looking. And she, uh, said that she liked this one when, when Grady's and she follows Grady's and Cutler on Instagram and says that she liked this one. Um, and actually sent me, you know, the post that they posted. Uh, so I was like, you know, I mean, it's cheap, all those other reasons. Plus she thinks it's good looking. So you know, just another reason, right? Uh, the, the thing to kind of the straw to break the camel's back to get me to buy this knife. Um, when I got it and showed it to her, she didn't even recognize it. Uh, she said she thought that it was black in the picture, in the uh, the picture that Great Eastern Cutlery posted of it. So um, <laughs> it's not the first time she's seen colors uh, a little differently. Like um, I have green eyes. She thinks they're blue. Um, <laughs> so... 
uh, you know, kind of kind of funny that she thought it was black, but I actually am thinking about dyeing it. I like the green, but I actually would have liked the red linen better. Um, I went with this, you know, rather than, the, I was gonna get it, but I went with the green linen versus the red linen um, because she said she liked the green linen. Um, so I, I might dye it uh, considering trading it or, or getting a red linen and, and, you know, selling this one, but uh, probably just keep this one. But either way, I thought that was kind of funny and that was one of the reasons that, that I got this. Um, but uh, kind of to go along with what I said about them making this a lot, another thing that people a while back complained about was, you know, gradation cutlery you know, doesn't make enough of the popular patterns, right? The, they don't make a large enough quantity of the popular patterns like the 15s, the 71s, things like that. Well, they listened. They, they've been making this knife, I think, every year for the past few years. Like I say, they've made a bunch of runs of this knife. Uh, they've been making a lot of 15s. After people were saying that, they, they made the Beer Scouts, which was, I think, the largest run of knives that Great Asian Cutlery ever did um, so far. Uh, so lots and lots of 15s. They're making more uh, number 15s this year. So they're listening to that, right? Um, now people with them making lots of the popular patterns are kind of starting to say, well, I wish they'd bring back some of the, the older patterns. Uh, and I mean, I'm always for that. I'm not at all against people, you know, putting their opinion out there. And, and I actually agree. Uh, I'm really, really happy that they're do and doing the 46 this year. And that's the thing there. They're kind of listening to that also. Um, along with these runs of the 71s and the 15s that they're doing this year, they also have on the schedule the number 46 whalers, and uh, which is an old pattern. They've done runs of them before and are bringing it back in muscle bone and uh, I believe ironwood. And then some SFOs I'm hoping to get... Uh, for the Allegheny Mountain Knife Club that I joined recently. I'm hoping to get uh, one of the LVS Abalone uh, whalers also, but they're making that, which is an older pattern, and then they're also making um, the 44 uh, Magnum, or 44 Gunstock, which is uh, a new pattern, and it's pretty similar uh, to the 22 Magnum that they made. It's like a scaled up three and a half inch version of the 22 Gunstock, or 22 Magnum. Um, so that's a new pattern. So they're definitely, you know, listening to that also and making, um, you know, new patterns. So I think that it's it's easy to forget that, that GEC really does, you know, listen to feedback from, from customers and seems to respond, maybe not always super quickly, but, you know, it's a business they have to go through, they have to have a plan and everything. But they do seem to respond to, to customer feedback. Um, one last thing here on, on that uh, is that there's something new with the tubes here uh, for these this run of 71s. Um, and it's that the tube uh, sticker is printed. Um, so with like a computer. All previous, actually that's not true. So a lot of people think all previous Great Eastern Cutlery knives um, have had printed, or actually it's cursive, um, handwritten, I mean, uh, you know, numbers, pattern numbers, and, you know, handle material. That's actually not true. Uh, there, there were some SFOs made early on for Smoky Mountain Knife Works uh, that had actually, not only did they not have handwritten, they just had a barcode. So um, this is definitely not the least hand handmade or hand done uh, tube sticker that Gradation Cutlery has done. Um, there was some Bradford Cutlery knives made for Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They can't make them now because Case Cutlery owns the, the trademark now. But uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works did some SFOs and they've done some other also, I believe, that just had a bar, uh, barcode. So, you know, it's not true that all of them have been handwritten, but most, like 99% probably of Great Eastern Cutlery tube stickers have been handwritten. And, you know, I've watched them doing that when I was on in the factory tours and stuff. And, you know, it has to take a lot of time. And, and you have to remember that they're a business. It's great. It's one of, it's really the thing that makes me enjoy the knives is that they're making them in the classic way. They're handmade by people in Pennsylvania, you know, like two hours um, from, from where I live, 
uh, less than an hour from where I grew up and they're doing it handmade with you know the classic methods and everything all of that I, I really enjoy I really like it's one it's really the thing that, that keeps me coming back to gradation cutlery but I don't think that it's a sign of decline which you know I've seen some people uh, you know like on Instagram kind of suggesting that they uh, that they're using a printing machine to, to make these tube stickers um, rather, I think it's a it's a smart business decision. I think rather than being surprised that they're using um, a printer for these, I think we should be surprised that they have been handwriting them so far. Um, I mean, think of all the time that it takes, you know, for someone who they could be having, maybe take more time sharpening the knives. You know, like they they that's another thing that they listen to customer feedback. Uh, for a while, the edges were you know not that great. They have been much better. Uh, by the way, uh, this knife came with a. A pretty well done edge. It was um, very sharp. It was shaving sharp, uh, receipt paper slice, push cutting sharp, uh, hair shaving sharp. So very it came very sharp. Not super even. Um, it was a little uneven at the tip. So you know I sharpened it. But they've definitely been doing a better job of the edges. So you know if someone's spending more time on the edges, or maybe more time looking over the fit and finish, uh, you know that's less time. That, that they you know could be spending on this so maybe by taking this job away from someone so that they don't have to sit there and hand write every every tube sticker uh that person can be using that time and gc can be using that labor resource for something that matters a little bit more like the actual knife uh so i don't think that this is a sign of of decline in any way and some other people have you know that i've mentioned this on blade forums and people there agreed with that um one thing though it's cool. Uh, I don't know if you can tell at all, but this is actually not black ink. It's green ink. And the, the natural canvas micarta ones are tan and the red linen are red. So it does have a little bit of a, a unique touch to it in that the ink is, you know, corresponds with the color of the handle. So just something that, you know, I'm not sure everybody noticed or, or recognized, but uh, a little thing. GEC does uh, make changes. They're always in a, a process of, of, I think, you know, um, responding to, to the market and their customers and everything. And uh, I think that they're, they're going in a good direction. I'm really looking forward to uh, the, the whalers, like I said, might get a, a gun stock. I really like brass hardware, um, but I'm not sure about that one. Uh, but I, I really like this knife. I'm glad I decided to get, I guess, a fourth one. Uh, and I think that I'll be keeping this one, if not, you know, trying to trade it for a red linen or dyeing it. So, uh, the Great Eastern Cutlery Farm and Field number 71 Bullnose in OD Green Linen Micarta is a great using knife uh, from Great Eastern Cutlery at a lower price point than normal from them. And uh, it's going to be one that you can use without worrying about it. And it's going to work really well for that. So, um, if you've enjoyed this video... Uh, please, you know, like it. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. I like to see what you all have to say. And uh, I often respond to them. Um, if you would like to get notifications for other videos, um, uh, I have lots that I'm going to be uploading both knife talk videos and uh, one minute overviews. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you get those notifications. And then you can also take a look at my past Knife Talk videos and One Minute Overviews. I've got lots of gradation cutlery, some queen, some modern knives, a couple fixed blades. So take a look at those and don't forget to go out and do good.